gone and uh, this time I want to say welcome to the class. I hope you had a good week and um, the exercise for which you needed the morning. I hope it went well. <coughs> uh, yeah, so today I want to just take us through the last bits of uh, knowing the parts of the computer. I think we really finished those parts. Excuse me, Master. Can you hear me? Master. Yep. Have you said an exercise in the morning? <laughs> yes, I did. Which one? It was online. No, you you had something to do at campus at eight to do with photos. It was some exercise. Hey, so. I, I thought the exercise like as in doing work. Okay, it's no, just a no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying. I hope it went well. Yeah, that's what I wanted to uh, tell you. So now we are going to just continue where we we left. I think the last time we all met, we were, we were discussing um, cards. We talked about video cards. We talked about audio cards. So those are the main things that get into the system case. So all those when you um, <coughs> you finish, the last bits are really the storage, and I think you also know. So let me just share my screen and. Uh, after that, then we will I'll, I'll, I'll sh we'll talk about the we'll talk about the storage components <clears throat> for the computer to be able to work. You you fix the hard disk. You you fix the power supply. You fix the the board into the system case, and you have fixed the the cards which are relevant. The processor is in place. Then you will need to have um, the RAM is also in place. Uh, you will need to you will need to have storage, and storage is what I want to discuss right now. Um, right, I just want to get the messages out of my way because they are distracting me. Uh, Just close that off. Okay. Right. So I'm going to just do a screen share. Are you all hearing me clearly? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Let me just uh, share my screen. I want to pick up this bit first so let me know if you're seeing are you seeing my screen clearly yes all right so yes we are seeing very good okay the words are too small i cannot read oh okay don't worry i'm going to put it on uh, on slideshow shortly let me just get to where I want to be and then we can yeah right so it's gonna be like that and here okay how about that is that clear Yes. Oh, yes, it is clear, sir. Oh, great. I love that bass. Whose voice is that? <laughs> that is Faustin. Faustin, you're welcome. Okay, yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> once you have installed all the relevant components on the motherboard and you have <clears throat> the, the power supplies in place, processor, all that, then you'll need to have storage because the computer will not work without storage. And this is now what we call uh, the storage it comes in two types, okay? So we have what we call the primary storage, which we already looked at, that is RAM. RAM is primary. Reason, 
it's called pri primary and the other name is that it is volatile i think i talked about that probably earlier that its contents will be lost when power is off okay so ram is volatile compare that volatile it comes from really the concept of evaporation okay that whatever is in there can evaporate so volatile and why does it evaporate why does it disappear is because the, the power is turned off so any content that is stored in ram is temporary it's only used at that particular moment when the power is there and also when um, when the information is needed once power goes off, whatever is stored in memory is lost. So content is not permanent. Now, second type of storage, we call it the secondary storage. Now, the secondary storage, this is now um, the various non-volatile storage devices such as hard disks, uh, DVDs, uh, CDs, secure digital cards, what we call SD cards. So all those are secondary storage. I'm sure you have learned this in your basics or fundamentals of ICT, hopefully. Um, so um, the computer needs storage. So remember, primary, that is uh, RAM is on the board. It's, it goes into the RAM slots, which we, we looked at. Then the secondary storage, the hard disks go into the drive bay. The drive bay in the system case is next to the hard, uh, next to the power supply unit. So we will, sh uh, we will see, or I'll show you where um, uh, where the hard disks will go and what are the cables that are used to connect the hard disks. Uh, so remember uh, to remind me if I if I forget that. Right, so, well, when we talk about memory, <coughs> uh, some of the um, memory, de uh, memory devices store information in terms of uh, magnetic tapes, others are in terms of voltages. Uh, so, in terms of voltages, um, an on state is referred to as a one, and a zero state is referred as the two. The computer, remember, understands, the computer language understands figures in only zeros and ones, and that's why it's called binary. And in uh, computational mathematics, the reason you learn computational mathematics at this level is for you, or for you to understand computer language. Okay, so the base two, binary, is the language that uh, a computer uses. So the storage, of content on any storage device is in terms of zeros and ones uh, for those which are electric and then the magnetic ones we call them magnetic dipoles but this is not necessary for you for now just know it's hard disk and um, the hard disk comes in two formats one is magnetic one is we will uh, we'll call it a solid state okay um, so how does a hard disk look like? This is the structure, basically. The hard disk inside, when you open the hard disk, it has got a medium. This one is the metallic disk. It's called a platter. Somebody's microphone is on. Please, um, please mute. Please mute. Whoever his microphone is on is disturbing us. I wish they could mute. Thank you. Let me just admit some people. All right. Okay. All right. Back to the presentation. Okay, back to our presentation now. Um, I was explaining that um, when you have um, when you have sorry, 
a good number of people were in the lobby so I'm trying to get them in hold up hold on a bit let me get everyone in okay I'm uh, hoping now all those who are in the lobby are, are in now so let's continue let's continue sharing again let me see the first stop sharing quickly and then okay so uh here we are okay um so i was explaining the platter that this metallic surface here which is really it's coated with tiny iron particles it is shiny sometimes it looks brown uh, or golden uh, it is um, <coughs> it is the one that stores information on the hard disk now there are very many of them stacked together so these are called platters there are very many so inside the, the hard disk looks solid but the it's like there are so many disks which are stacked together so we call them platters now the surface that um, stores um, information is really the the coating this brown coating which is made up of the magnetic material and the magnetic material is magnetized to form the north and south to represent the binary digits how does it save now there is this metal so the platter spins it moves around and as it moves around there is an arm here this is called the read and write arm and the read and write arm has got a head and that head so i'm not listening sorry listening to you uh maybe you're the only one uh, is everybody not hearing me we are hearing yeah um, yeah loud and clear according to to my base man okay so yeah um adjust your volume please so that you can hear me for those who are not hearing me but um, i'm trying to shout i'm, I'm really shouting here uh, clearly um so i'm talking about the arm this is called the read and write arm now on it is the head so the platter this metallic surface spins and as it spins the head writes onto the platter or reads it does both that's why it's called the read and write head so it reads it writes onto the platter when you when you are saving something and then if you want to retrieve something from it the head also reads so it's called a read and write head uh, but we will talk you will look at uh, more of the disk geometry again in computer workshop practice too when we're talking about preparation of the hard disk for installation of applications and so on so for now that's what is important so that's the hard disk um, so um, important to note how is the hard disk connected so there are a number of old technology uses this kind of cable which is called IDE integrated drive electronics IDE that's the older technology so for the old technology the cable so this is called the interface this cable can sometimes is called a bus because it's also it's a data bus it trans it uh, it transfers data just like usb is also a bus universal serial bus so the id is also a bus a, da a data transmission channel um so the IDE looks like this so that's the old type of um, hard disk interface which connects the hard disk to the board to the motherboard there are newer ones the newer ones now we'll be looking at those also which is which use what we call serial advanced technology attachment SATA so the SATA cables are shorter thicker and more um, more efficient so these are the um these are the main uh interfaces that are used to connect 
uh, hard disks and even uh, optical disks to the motherboard. So once you've put the, the, the hard disk in the, in the drive bay, then you need to connect this cable, which is the serial um, advanced technology attachment. So it's first time transferring data compared to the IDE, which is for the older technology. And there is no need to, to um, distinguish disks as master and slave in the old arrangement. Here, every disk comes with its own SATA cable. So that's, um, that's attachment. So these ones are called interfaces or data buses for connecting the hard disk to the board. Is that clear so far? Is that clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yeah, so IDE, yeah. remember? Data, data cables or data buses. A bus, basically. It's a, a channel of data transmission, so we call them buses. Or you can call it a data cable, it's okay, but it's a connection. It, you use it to connect the hard disk to the motherboard so that it can communicate with the, with the buses on the motherboard all the way up to the processor. Okay. So, new technology that uses SATA. Let me go back. Old technology uses IDE, Integrated Drive Electronics. That's the old technology for, for AT motherboards. Okay old motherboards new motherboards the atxs most of them use most of them use uh, sata which is this type of uh, connection right then on the board you should be able to pick out so on the board these ones the black and blue here this is where the ide goes while this red one here is where your SATA connection goes, okay? So IDE here, SATA here, right? Is that clear? So that you're able to clearly identify where the connector goes. So the connector, when you see this, you know that this is, and they always, they are keyed. That means it goes in one way only. You can't turn it the other way, okay? So this cable, red head you, and uh, you, you know that the red cable will go in here the blue for the earlier one so this is id so when you check on the board you'll be able to see which port um, goes uh, receives which connector so it's important okay Right, there are also what we call external disks. So now these ones I'm sure you're familiar with. Some have their own power, others are smart, small host are using USB cables. Uh, all are, um, are used for saving. So um, and then we have other uh, type of uh, storage devices such as secure digital cards. Then we have also the optical drives. I want to talk about that briefly. The optical drive, or what we call um, the CD or DVD drive, is also one of the drives that goes into the drive bay. So you have the hard disk and also you have the optical disk. So the optical disk drive is, is we call it ODD, for the hard disk is HDD, okay? So the optical disk drive basically is used for reading and writing onto CDs and DVDs. Also, it is installed in the drive bay. This time, it, it is not magnetic, so it uses light. Okay? So it's light that is used to save or read from the disk. Okay. So I think I will, more about CDs and discs will be learned in workshop practice two under multimedia. So this one I'm not going to. Right. Uh, I want to get the last ones, which are uh, high capacity SD cards. Yeah, so I want to talk about the card readers. 
so you have micro drives micro sd uh, secure digital memory cards there are those now which you use in your in your mobile phones and in digital cameras so all these are types of storage but they must go into what we call card readers okay so that is for storage now um i'm going to shift gear a bit so maybe before i shift gear let me take some questions uh if there are any questions let me fill them now and then you can i can change to another subtopic any questions so far any questions If I stop sharing my screen, okay. Any questions, comments? Oh, everybody is quiet. Can you hear me? By the way, I may be talking to myself. Yes, we are here. <laughs> okay. Are all right. All right. You don't have any questions. A uh, question. A uh, question. All right. Yes, I am Go ahead. Yeah, this is SATA cable. Mm. It transmits uh, the the data at what speed? Um. Oh, okay. Um. It depends on one. It depends on the speed of the board to begin with. But uh, we can talk about transfer speeds, which are way above as uh, above six about above sixty Mbps right above above 60 now um if you if we look at um a usb 3.0 for example which 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 range which go up to 600 so 600 mbps uh, for sata because it's a it's a bigger volume bigger capacity yeah 60 to 120 mbps works but at least know that it is faster, much faster compared to the IDE, which is old technology. But all these depend also on the <coughs> what we call the front uh, front side bus, uh, um, front side bus on the motherboard. Um, that is slightly ahead again for you. But yeah, so there are there are buses on the board um, whose speeds are, whose speed determine. Uh, the exchange of data between the processor and RAM and uh, the external devices. Uh, so normally the faster it is, uh, when, when the exchange of data between the hard disk and, and the processor is faster, that means it is running at the front side speed, front side bus speed. Okay, so it's determined by two things, uh, the front side bus speed and also its normal speed which is about at least over 60 mbps is that okay yeah All i right. have got that good good any other question okay i see we are oh we've reached 30 that's a good number today right those who are whom i hadn't welcomed you're all welcome wandera akimo um Nawati, Vanessa, who have just joined Sandra, Angela. Okay, so you're all welcome. Another question. Oh please okay, please go ahead. Now the drive bay it it holds only optical disk and the hard disk only. And uh, old technology for the old technology it used to hold also a floppy drive disk the floppy drive so basically the name the name drive bay it is strictly meant to hold disk drives okay that's why it's called a drive bay so the disk drives there include the hard disk drive the optical disk drive and the, um, the floppy disk drive floppies are outdated now so we can't talk about them anymore uh, they don't um, let me see, many people are not in. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So it's drive. That means it holds. It holds drives only. It is just next to. Um, next to the the power supply unit. Okay. So I'm going to share something else so that we can see how they go into the drive bay and the practicality of it that is what we would have done in practice but now let me just show you here and then we yeah okay what am i sharing great Okay, so my next share is here. Okay, so I wanted just to show you the drive bay that somebody asked. Uh, we start all the way here. The video card installation is done, so let's look at this one. Um, that is the practical steps slide show from here okay so you can see the this one is for power the drive by the way the discs must also be powered and the discs which um the discs remember are movable parts i talked about that when i was looking at the power power supply unit um that the discs also uh, because they have movable parts they are supplied with 12 volts so remember that the disc is supplied with 12 volts so this is its uh, power connector remember the power connector for so it will connect power to the, the hard disk and then you have this SATA cable here the red one uh, okay it's the one that uh, is now from the disc I hope are you seeing my mouse are you seeing my mouse moving are you seeing my mouse are you seeing my mouse yes sir yes sir hey others are saying yes others are saying no you're not seeing it i'm not, not seeing it okay let me try and get a highlighter last time i used the highlighter it was also not showing so laser if i use the laser are you seeing a, a red laser moving are you seeing anything red on the screen no sir we are, not we are seeing it but it's not moving it's not moving I'm seeing red cables. Yeah, only seeing the red cables are not the red pointer, like my yes, mouse. I'm moving a, a red. You're not seeing at all? Oh, okay, okay. You're not seeing the cursor? Yeah. Yes, so we are not seeing it. Okay, it is not, it's not showing, so let me leave it. Uh, but let me try something else. Let me try a highlighter or a pen. I pick a pen. I've picked a pen and a red one. I'm going to circle something. You show, tell me whether you see it, okay? Yes. I'm going to write. It's okay, I've written or done around. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Uh, no. no, no, it's nothing we are seeing. No, no. We are seeing. <laughs> okay, okay, let me leave it out. It's not showing. I don't know why. Let me just erase it. Okay. Right, but uh, at least you can see the drive bay, right? Where the hard disk is and the cable are, you can see those? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. 
right so there are one two three four five bullet points do you see the bullet points yes, yes. yeah we can see okay so these are the steps basically and the warning first bullet point says they had disc much as it is it you see it in a metallic case it is fragile so it has to be handled with care it doesn't take shocks if it falls it can get damaged because of the what the platters inside so it can easily get damaged so um it is placed in the drive bay as i told you so this area here is the drive bay depending on the size of the drive bay it can hold two three drives disc drives and even an optical drive so you can you can load more than one hard disk if you want if the space is there um, so it is loaded and then screwed on the sides you see there are screws there so you it sits in the bay and then you screw it there okay so it's secured using screwdrivers then uh, the power cable which is this one from the power supply unit to the hard disk there's a power cable which looks like this one so connects that at the end there you can see this white end which is this one and then it goes to the power it comes from the power supply unit then the SATA or IDE IDE sometimes called a parallel one IDE and then the serial one is SATA which connects to from the hard disk now to the motherboard so you all you need to do is to be able to identify where you connect the SATA cable to the to the disk and also where it goes on the board and its power that's it and then you secure it in its drive bay that is uh, how it goes in there if it's the optical drive the same thing it also goes into the drive bay still you secure it with a screw and so on uh, okay so you just place it in the in the bay hold it in, in, on the sides the screwdrivers your screwdriver handy and the screws and you connect same same power they take since it's optical it takes the same power okay it takes the same power uh, 12 volts because it's movable so the drive bay basically holds those drives very important then all the other various cables can be connected depending on where they go all you need to do is you need to check uh, what type of power supply and what type of motherboard remember i said an atx case must hold an atx motherboard and therefore also an atx power unit so the atx power connectors we i i showed you those so all those must be powered right they must be powered using appropriate um appropriate voltages okay appropriate voltages the fans any movable part whether if it's a fan it will take 12 volts four pin connectors normally go for the fans okay so those are some of the cables so you should we will when we meet on friday we will we will now just get into the system case dismantle and see what is inside um yeah i think this is where i wanted to to end with the, the various parts and the connections these ones we already saw them uh the things you need to know uh the ports you need to have the speakers the audio all this the back panel the back panel basically looks like this which i already explained the back panel of your of your system case it has the various connectors audio the video the printer the usb all these um, i already explained that so um that's where we are so the next thing is now the last thing once you have installed all the things you need you have installed components on the you have installed the, the components of the motherboard you've, you've installed uh, the, the drives you're all good to go 
then for the computer to work you need to install what we call the operating system and that's the last thing we are going to discuss now okay so installation of operating system you need to know uh, what the OS is just a moment yeah I'm going to stop sharing now okay so um, the for the computer to work there must be software that enables it to work and uh, from your hopefully again let me field this question let me field it again so that i'm sure that i'm talking um i'm saying the right things um what type of software do you know that the computer needs i like to just take some answers from you what type of software microsoft software that is one one data microsoft software okay why well, microsoft software are so many uh which ones are those particularly okay uh let me ask it in another way software is classified there are three in uh, classified in in three right when you talk about software we have three classes or three groups yes jenny has said system software very good that's one any other person application software. yes isaac very good application software any other the third group third group Hello. Oh, we only need to I don't know whether there is a third <laughs> one maybe you can introduce it to us I want to there could be somebody who knows any other person who knows the third the third group of the set of systems so, sorry come again Dixon of shell of system of, of shell oh, yeah. What is that? What is off shelf? Utility. Good, Frankie. Well done. Utility software. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, utility. So those are the three groups. Yeah. You have a system, you've got application, and then you've got utility. Yes, Jaria. Yeah, that's true. So those are the ones. And, um, so uh, all these should be running on the computer in order for the computer to actually work okay uh let me come back to then there is another group but those ones really uh maybe maybe also you could say they are part of utility but not necessarily utility those ones come with uh, hardware i will talk about that um I, I need to pick somebody brian brian can you hear me Brian Kaziba. Yes, sir. I you? can hear you. Okay. Please. Yes, Brian. Uh, can you give me an example of system software? Windows 10. We Windows 10. Okay. What what class yes. what class of uh, system software is Windows 10? under windows yes it is windows i know but what does what do you call it um it's system fast yes but uh, there is a generic name for it all right jenny who is rahma jenny is is uh, is that our president she's not speaking but she's yes. giving good yes. answers yes Is Jenny our president, class rep? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yes, Jenny, that's correct. It's operating system. Windows 10 is part of class of 
uh, system software. Basically, system software really refers to our OS, operating system. So the operating system is, um, is very key for the computer to work. Without the OS, the computer is as good as useless. Ah, yeah, okay, you, you've used, the, yeah, Jenny, thanks. I've now seen you. You have used a different name, Rahma, so I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. Um, so the system software, when you talk about system, majorly is the operating systems. And uh, um, I think Isaac had given us, uh, you'd given us um, Windows 10. No, Brian was the one who gave Windows 10. Yes, Windows 10 is, yes, family of Windows, but those are operating systems which evolved from very very far we started with disk operating system came to uh, windows uh, windows uh, 95 windows 98 windows 2000 and all those windows up to now windows 11 um, so those are operating systems but there are also other operating systems including the ones which run your phones either android which is also an operating system for those who are using android phones there are those who use windows phones they also have windows operating systems there are those who use ios if you have an apple um, an iphone then you have the ios um, operating system so those ones run the, um, the computers including your phones your phones are also mini computers um, yeah then application any examples of application software again for the computer to work what? yes microsoft word microsoft word yes it's an application microsoft excel microsoft excel correct yes nambi sandra microsoft powerpoint yeah uh, of course most of you are into microsoft yeah um but there are also others there's open office database that is access correct publisher yeah so all those um yeah 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 good 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 answers yes Ka eric kalulu rahma frankie all those are good answers from you guys um so those are um application when we talk about application it means you are it's a software that meets user needs what the what you as the user needs to do they are sometimes referred to as productivity uh, productivity software so for the computer to work you need os you need um, you need also to have um, application software then the third group which uh, frankie had given us as the utility uh, the utility software, yes, Excel is part, that's correct, true, Babiri. Um, utilities are software that are used to maintain the health of the computer. Sometimes you need the computer to be in good shape. Sometimes it's used for protection as well. Anyone who knows an example of utility software? Brian Kaziba, yes, antivirus, true, correct, yeah. So antivirus is a, is a, is a, a typical example of a utility uh, software. Then there are those which are also used for um, maintaining the health within the computer itself, which are inbuilt. So uh, you need, to, I'm going to ask you, everyone, to do research and uh, <coughs> get for me four other utility software apart from antivirus okay so that's for you four utility software apart from antivirus good so do that i uh, you let well, i will take field those at a later time okay so that is uh, so for the computer to work you need to be able to install software file management is a function of the operating system vivian okay it's a function of the operating system so the operating system does um, uh, four major functions remember four major functions of the operating system 
let me see if I can pick share my screen again finally yes backup software is good uh, there are specific ones that is very true Bakanya Esther yeah that's true correct okay so um, let me just share this quickly as I come to share my window let me pick from here this is our handout yes debuggers very good so oh, somebody is giving us really good answers there okay so here we are so we have got software that need to be installed in order to um in order to uh, install in order to be able to um make our computer to run okay i want to get the right one Just a moment so for the operating system to be installed it comes with what we call an installer and uh, the installer is uh, is uh, is is um, a package it's bundled normally a number of pro things files and so on are bundled together to form what is called an installer so when you run it for the first time uh, files are extracted and then they are they they run on the computer and it takes quite a bit of time to install typically for windows 10 now windows 10 and 11 will take you about 45 minutes to do a complete installation right so it's it installs files such as applications drivers and other software onto the computer so those are called installers so the operating system comes comes on um, either a CD or on a DVD now for the later versions for our latest versions of Windows uh, Windows 11 Windows from Windows 10 to 11 Windows 10 cannot fit on a DVD anymore because the size is bigger than a single DVD so usually it either comes on a flash which is about um, at least 8 GB or you're asked to just download it from the internet disclaimer though is that you should always install software which is licensed okay licensed very important right so um, how does the installation take place basically you wait um, when the software comes either on a DVD or on a flash insert it and there are those which are termed as auto detect and auto extract it will run automatically if it doesn't run automatically and then you need to set up what we call a boot sequence and use the function keys when you start your computer and quickly you press either an f2 or an f1 or an f12 those keys are called function keys and they are determined by the manufacturer of the board and once you press that it takes you to asks you to uh, where do you want to what we call the boot sequence or any other setups that will be on the machine depending on the function key that you have pressed uh, so when you press say uh, the function key that takes you to select where uh, you want your computer to boot from then if your OS or the operating system files are on a flash then you have to choose you'll go through the menu and choose flash and then uh, when you click OK then it will start extracting those files automatically and the operating system will be installed all you need um, the, the, within the package these packages I've just called the installer packages within this there is what we call um, 
a wizard it's an inbuilt help uh, assistant that takes you just helps you to follow through it takes you do this it tells you do this you click on next click on next so that is called the wizard uh, it's like a help assistant that automatically helps you on what to do how to manage the installation process so once you have started the installation process you just sit down and relax follow the wizard in telling you what to do and all the installations will be done um, so I'm going to just stop sharing my screen. Um, so, sir, I have a question there. You have a question. Yep. Yes. Go ahead. So, sir, my computer is showing uh, activate Windows. Mm. According to what you have explained, mm. can I go to the Internet and I download the Windows and then I do the activation myself? very true on one condition <laughs> okay and uh, so when it shows you activation it requires activation it's obvious that you use the you use the stolen license right I don't know whether it was your group or another group that I, I was teaching telling you that in Uganda people are thieves they steal software uh, so when you install any application or when you install uh, whether it is a OS or or the application software every software comes with a license okay so for you to use it it must be licensed for the license to be recognized it must be activated now activation means you're connecting to the servers of the manufacturer of the software so in this particular case if yours is Windows you're connecting to our so our site Microsoft site you're connecting to Microsoft and then uh, they validate your license so if you don't have a license obviously when you connect then um, the servers will recognize that you are using pirated software so you'll get a message that you might be a victim of software piracy I don't know whether you have not seen that message right so it means you are not using a genuine license now what these computer sellers and some of your friends do is they use they activate using what we call cracks now that is that is stealing basically okay sorry nambi what are you saying nambi speak if you can uh, you you've sent messages which i've missed sandra are you there Sandra mine says oh okay mine says that update your software but when I try to do so they tell me that battery is too low okay if it's your computer you can normally if you're supposed to update something what the computer advises is that you must connect you don't update when you are when you're off grid power you need to connect to power uh, AC power not run from the battery normally uh, updates require that you you <coughs> oh your voice has a problem okay sorry so um, yes it means that um, you should connect your computer to power you must power your computer before you can updates can happen the reason is that some of the updates can be long so if you're on battery your battery may run out before the update is completed so that's the reason that it's always asks you uh, to plug in okay to plug in and not to uh, not to run on battery that's the reason yeah so isaac that is the problem isaac do you actually have um, a license for your operating system no sir and i think that was the problem that's the reason <laughs> yes so yes you can activate by connecting to the internet as long as you 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 either have a correct license key or if you not it will ask you to pay okay to buy a license so basically that okay any other question
right so yeah i want to conclude with uh, just uh, the four functions of the operating system that i mentioned for you to be able to install the os um, um, when the when you install the operating system it offers four things one the operating system provides an interface between you the user and the computer so it provides a user interface and then it also provides um, a platform on which application software can run again you can't install office without um, without the operating system so it provides the the platform on which um, software which is now application software can be uh, can be installed then it, it the operating system manages okay it manages um, hardware okay hardware and any peripheral devices um, the OS manages that how does it manage by enabling the installation of other software which we call drivers now not the driver of a car but whenever you install um, any hardware it must come with its own software to work for example if you want to connect a printer to your computer you must first install the software for the printer now the software for the printer is what we call uh, the drivers for the printer okay if it's a card again whether it's a video card it make it also comes with its own drivers whether it's your phone sometimes when you connect your phone for the first time using a usb cable you will notice that the computer will take some time and say wait drivers are being installed and then after that you'll get a message now that now your device is ready for use when that happens <coughs> sorry it means the software for that will enable your phone to work on the computer has now been installed so those software that enable hardware to work on the computer collectively are called drivers <coughs> so the operating system offers hardware management within uh, within the computer system and finally the fourth one is um, it provides a database for file management file structure okay so file management is run is a function of the operating system it creates that structure okay and in second semester when you're looking at workshop practice too you'll be talking about the filing system and the different file um, file systems of the operating system you'll be talking about file file allocation table fat 16 maybe fat 32 and then new technology filing system which we call ntfs uh, which are file systems okay so that's um that those are the major functions of the operating system okay so i think <clears throat> when you have installed all the hardware you've connected all the cables you have done everything then you install the operating system you install applications and drivers then your computer is good to go the next time we meet we will be looking at those practically and then talking about what if after doing all that the computer fails and that will lead us to what we call troubleshooting okay so when you when you have done everything and the computer does not boot or something goes wrong then you need to find out what has happened and we call that troubleshooting <coughs> sorry drivers software that enable hardware to work okay specific software that enable a specific type of hardware to work so every hardware which is this external uh, when you connect it to the computer it must come with its own software to make it work i've given the example of a printer that when you want to use a printer the printer must come with its own software you must install the software on the computer so that the printer can work and that software we call it we call them the drivers of the printer so printer printer drivers it could be phone drivers it could be usb drivers so all whatever hardware you want to connect must come with its own software so that's what we call drivers oh welcome okay 
Okay, I think I am done. Uh, I can take questions and comments. I'm going to stop recording. Then we can say our hellos. If you have any questions or comments, this is the time. Two, uh, three minutes for questions, and then I can switch off connection, uh, recording. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Yes. All right. Who is asking? That is Dixon. Please go ahead. Sir, so, so I'm just inquiring for the handout of the topic you've just covered. It's there online. It's on the LMS. Okay. It's the same handout we've been using. It's there on the LMS. Uh, this one here. Let me just show you. We have used this handout. Where is it? PDF. Building a computer system. Okay. This one. This one is there on the LMS. Okay. <clears throat> so pick it. That's the one I've, 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 I've used. PowerPoint is not a handout. It's just to help me to explain. But the handout with all the with more detail is this one here. Okay. Dixon, is that okay? <clears throat> yes, sir. All right. Good. Good. It's okay. Great. Okay. So, according to what you have explained. Eh? Yeah. That you can also you can also have this operating system on a flash. Yes. Is it true? Yes, it is true. Okay, you can have it on a flash, and then you 